audio frequencies. What are they? Sine waves? Sound samples? The range of human hearing? Get ready. <laughs> This might be a total mistake, but I'm recording audio on a windy beach and it's cold. What am I doing here? Dolphins? I don't know. The general range of human hearing is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Or if you like using less words when you're using words, 20,000 hertz is 20 kilohertz. Dolphins hear above 100 kilohertz? That's impressive. What's below 20 hertz? Infrasonic. If you need to detect earthquakes, maybe you want to do a little more research on that. What's above 20 kilohertz? Ultrasound. What's it used for? Detecting babies. I'm using sine waves because they are your classic no-nonsense plainest form of generating tones. So now let's change scenes for no particular reason. Ah, that's better? Okay, let's get to the point. I'm gonna play a bunch of tones so you know what they sound like when you're using your equalizer to equalize your audio. Like what is 1K? Let's find out. So we're gonna use synthesis to make a what's the frequency cheat sheet. Here's where the sound samples come in. 20 hertz is the bottom of human hearing. Hear that? I could barely hear it on headphones. There's this whole thing where sounds just get quieter as they get out of your hearing range. It's not like you're hearing 21 hertz loud and clear like a champ and then 20 hertz is the end of the line. There are various standards regarding actual loudness and perceived loudness, the Fletcher Munson curve and its successors is a popular topic of discussion. Whether or not human brains can fully perceive sub bass frequencies when they're right up against our ears using headphones is another thing. Okay, I'm done with these headphones. They are not even plugged in. Long story short, all these samples have been generated with a negative 17.3 decibel amplitude, which is the height of the sound wave, and that tells you how loud it is. Hmm, not really. Why negative 17.3 of all numbers? Because humans don't hear linearly. For YouTube, I'm aiming for negative 14 LUFS, or loudness unit full scale, which is a standard for how loud something sounds. To humans. Sound is measured in decibels where negative infinity is silence and zero is the loudest something can be. Okay, let's add 10 hertz to get 30 hertz. It's still pretty low, but it sounds louder, unless your speakers aren't able to reproduce tones that low. This is all in the sub bass range, which is 20 to 60 hertz. Here's a more practical 50 hertz. This is where you start getting into bass guitar territory, like your traditional four string variety. Open E is about 40 hertz, cause musical notes are frequencies, but they are colored by the instrument and a bunch of other things, which make it so the act of hitting a note isn't like plucking a pure 40 hertz tone, cause it's impure with harmonies and everything else that's picked up between the vibrating string and when it gets encoded on the computer. Some people call it character and some people call it parameters that can be replicated in audio synthesis but we're gonna keep it simple. Okay, 100 hertz. That's literally in the bass range of 60 to 250 hertz. It's where your tenor sax comes in. Maybe not your tenor sax, but a tenor sax. If you can't hear this, clearly you have audio output issues or you have reverse slope hearing loss. Get a decent pair of headphones and go see a doctor. If I just played all my tones with a negative 14 decibel amplitude, this is what it would look like. Once you get to where it becomes yellow, that's too loud for people listening to the video. Those people like yourself would turn down the volume and probably not turn it back up again, or just leave out of disgust. That's why you have to be deliberate with your loud moments. With my videos, I'm crossing into the yellow all the time, but it's not gonna be with irritating high-pitched tones. It sounds natural to be louder when you would expect something like a musical montage or an explosion to be louder than the sound of talking. By the way, in this case, green is good listening volume for my target loudness, and the darker green and bluey bands are more quiet. Also notice the curves on this zoomed-in graph. 
These are sine waves, hard cut together, playing at a constant volume, yet the loudness increases slowly between them. And you can hear it. That's because there's no right angles in nature. A speaker can't go from one type of movement to another without a transition period. Hey, it's me from the future. Speaking of transition periods... Basically what I'm saying is synthetically generated tones don't play back as purely as the mathematical equations that represent them. Also there might be perceptual elements in how we humans hear things that might be a factor too, but I didn't research that part so it probably isn't true. 500 Hertz! Now we're entering the mid-range. Note that the loudness changes are becoming less extreme at this point. This is where the range of the piccolo starts. Yes, that piccolo. A thousand hertz, or one kilohertz, or one K. Okay, now we've reached the point where negative 14 dB literally sounds like what it is. How aesthetic. Is it any coincidence that the human voice is centered right over this area? Convenient that our ears are tuned to hear our voices? Let's play 3000 hertz. This is where I would start to get loud, but I'm not gonna let that happen because I want my videos to have balanced audio. This is in the higher mid-range or treble as your stereo receiver from the before times would say. This is around where the harp ends. By the way, harps, pianos, and organs, they all have a crazy wide range from sub bass to sibilance. Speaking of sibilance, 10,000 hertz. Or was I speaking of sibilance? Yeah, I think 10,000 hertz is sibilance. 10,000 hertz. Full-on high pitch, still crazy loud, but even more off-putting. You hear it in the harmonics and ringing that instruments give off, like percussive cymbals. 15,000 hertz! That's what I would call painful, even though for me it sounds quieter, but it's like being stabbed in the brain with an uncountable number of needles all at once. And then 20,000 hertz! Can you hear 20,000? No, you can't. <laughs> I got you. You can't hear it because YouTube compression removes it from audio to save space because most people can't hear it. Even though I can't hear 20K, I can see it's not there. The top row is my master export and the bottom row is after YouTube processed it and look at that, 20K is totally gone. Me from the past is about to talk about audio compression 30 seconds from now, but is blissfully unaware about how that topic will affect this very video. According to the LUFS chart, 20 kilohertz should sound just as loud as 10 kilohertz. Why didn't loudness start to taper off around 20 kilohertz when you would think perceived loudness would start to drop off for ideal human hearing? Is it just not programmed in? I don't know. And even if I did, it wouldn't affect what I do because I'm not an audio scientist. So when you hear or read, so when you hear or Read. I think I'm attempting a pun on sound with that, but for whatever reason I made read bold and I don't know why, but I'm gonna read it that way. When you hear or read about mp3s or compression in general and how they remove frequencies that we don't perceive very well and aren't fundamental to music, that's called low passing, taking the low path, as in removing higher frequencies, which in this case are around 16k and up. See, I said it right there, 16K and up, and it didn't occur to me that that would apply to this very video. By the way, if you're watching this in not HD, the audio compression is even more, as the lowest and highest tones don't look or sound as clear as they're supposed to be. Okay, now that we've made it through all that, let's take it down a notch and do it all over again. I'm gonna replay all the 10 second tones, hard cut, snap together with the perceived loudness normalized so they all sound like they're the same volume. Here's a chart of what we heard before. On the left column is each audio sample in hertz, and next to that is how loud each tone sounded, with a graph corresponding for the playback experience where you read it from top and then it goes this way through time. So you see as it gets louder. Okay, now this is what you will be hearing. All the tones amplified or whatever the opposite of that is to sound like they are the same volume. So in the beginning we're boosting the tones and then decreasing the volume of the tones. And that's what the playback experience will look like. Why am I aiming for negative 15 LUFS WTF? If I boosted the, wait a minute, how is that script supposed to go? I don't think that's the way I wanted to read it.
Let's do that again. Basically what I'm saying is if I aim from my usual negative 14 LUFS, my 20 hertz tone will get boosted 17.3 dB to become zero dB amplitude, which technically isn't clipping, but as far as I'm concerned it is, and me from the past will explain why. On top of that, my master audio track for every video or music, whatever I do, has a limiter with a negative one decibel ceiling on it. That's to make sure my audio doesn't clip when it's transcoded when I upload to YouTube, where my master video file is turned into a bunch of video files of various qualities and formats. Imagine that system and how it applies to Facebook or Instagram or Netflix or Apple Music or whatever you do with your videos in the future. You want to give yourself that extra buffer because when you transcode audio to a compressed format, there is a rounding of numbers that happens. And if that file gets copied and put into something else, it's compression on top of compression on top of compression. Those mutations add up. Just think about how the image quality of all memes looks awful. And that's an extreme example of what can happen to your audio. And when you have audio that's already compressed to maximize loudness, that can mean clipping you can hear and not just some transient peaks getting cut off. So that's why you don't export audio at zero dB. That's what they used to do with CD audio for a period of time because they viewed CDs as the end of the line. The the precious perfect thing that wouldn't get transcoded. Anyways, I dropped everything one decibel. You're not going to hear the difference. It's too small of a change to pick up on. The point is it will all sound like the same perceived loudness when played back on a setup that is balanced or neutral. Okay, 20 hertz. Let's go. If you ever look at the visualizer on a parametric equalizer and think, wow, that bass is jacked, well, it has to be that way. In order for bass to sound like it's the same volume as other frequencies, it has to technically have its amplitude boosted. You, the listener, don't have to do the boosting. It's done in the mixing and mastering process. But steers of the 90s had to have that mega bass button. Not sure if that was originally meant to give vinyl the bass boost it couldn't produce on its own, but man, did the 90s love bass. On top of that, mid-frequencies sound loud when the volume is low and when you turn it up low and high frequencies start to sound louder so if there's anything to be learned from this it's that mixing audio is always more difficult than you would think it would be <laughs> bonus tone Oh, <laughs> I forgot about that. Sorry, no bonus tone, because YouTube compression is just going to remove it. I mean, unless this video exists in some future, future world with uncompressed audio, then yeah, you can hear the bonus tone. Ugh. Is this overly complicated? This was supposed to be a quick four-minute video, and now it's 14 minutes and filled with time travel and dolphins. Whatever. There's sites online where you could test your hearing and try and beat my high score. Anyways, let's just let me from the past finish it up. Bonus tone. Humans hear from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Adults lose their ability to hear higher frequencies over time because of loss of sensitivity. 18,000 hertz is where my hearing tapers off. I can hear it, but it's very quiet. How do I deal with frequencies over that? All these visualizers let me see sound waves, so if I have a dialogue track and I see stuff at 20 kilohertz, like if I'm in the vicinity of an old TV, computer monitor, or a noisy electronic thingy, I can low pass it out. And on the reverse, if there's a rumble of some kind of vehicle, I can high pass it out, or take the high pass to remove low frequencies. And on that note, I'm done. See that little peninsula building over there? That's the first place they ever worked. Fun fact. <laughs>